I had to miss out on recess and other things that all the other kids got to do because I was like trying to learn how to hear and talk. Right away they had me, they said to my parents that I needed to be rushed to the hospital. We walk through the halls of school every day, passing many of our peers in the hallway with maybe just a smile or a simple hello. And maybe we will see some of those same individuals on the basketball court as we cheer on the team. But sometimes, if you are lucky enough, you will really get to know one of those individuals, and that person will be an incredible source of inspiration, both on and off the court. I grew up in Long Island, New York. Originally, it was my mom and my dad. Until I was five years old, they got a divorce. Then when I moved here, my mom met someone new, and now I have my stepbrother, Xander, and my half-brother, Mikey, who's four years old. I love him with all my heart. A lot of fun. When I was first born, I was born with bilateral microtia, which is basically deformed ears, like, from birth. And it restricted my hearing. It doesn't always restrict hearing but like it deformed my hearing canal. I was about, I think six, seven years old, I had my first surgery. And it was life changing like for me and my family because right after the surgery happened, I remember sitting in the hospital, someone dropped like a book or something and I turned my head and then all my aunts started crying and my mom started crying because like, they were like, you can finally hear now. Then from that point on, I had a disadvantage of other people for their first six years of life being able to hear. So I had to take speech classes. Like when I was younger in elementary school and middle school, people would pick on me and like, like call me weird names and always make fun of me being deaf. Once I got into high school, I brought a new attitude, whereas I'm not gonna show these kids that it like bothers me. So now in high school, like whenever it comes along, I don't hear something or like something funny happens and I don't hear it. Like we joke around and I'm okay with it. That aside, also I went through nine surgeries and each surgery I had to wait six months to return to playing the sport. So each surgery was just another setback and it wasn't easy. I picked up basketball when I was five years old. My dad took me to the park for the first time and like that's when I fell in love with playing. I used to love to play at the park. I never played organized basketball until I want to say fifth grade. Every day I literally worked so hard lifting weights going to the gym and practicing my shot and my handle. When I say every day, I mean every single day. Manny removes his cochlear implants during basketball games so that they will not be damaged, meaning he is deaf while playing. I love my teammates. They always love to make me feel comfortable and they always work with me. Like with hand signals, knowing that I was deaf, it was the one place that I felt comfortable being hearing impaired because I knew my teammates had my back. The past few years, I wasn't the point guard, so um, I had a always look for signs, which was tough for my teammates. But in the game, you're not thinking, like I have to make sure I put up a sign because Manny can't hear. So it's actually pretty funny. Like I kind of just had to learn based on where everyone was. So if I saw everyone was in a certain area, I knew that was the play. My senior year, I got to run point. So every time I brought the ball up, whenever there was a play call, I looked at coach and he gave me a sign. And then I called out the play to my teammates. So this year was a lot easier that I was in control of the game. The biggest advice I can give is just don't let anything stop you. Don't let anyone say that you can or can't do something because you have a disability or you're impaired. Because if you really want something, you can get it. So just do your best. Don't let anybody stop you. Manny is not the only story of inspiration. A few lockers down is Jack Gilroy, also a senior at Nanuet High School. So I was born in Nanuet, grew up here my whole life. Um, I have a great family, a sister, she, Claire, she's 22 years old, and my mom's one of eight, and along with my dad, he's one of four. So I have a lot of aunts and uncles that have been supporting me my whole life. When I was seven years old in first grade, um, I was always an energetic kid, and my parents and family, they still joke around with me today, like how bad I was. All of a sudden, in first grade, like, I was just really tired, and I was falling asleep in class, which isn't like too usual for a first grader. And one night after one of my best friend's birthday parties, um, I said to my dad, uh, I think my heart's beating too fast. And it's kind of a weird thing for a seven-year-old to say. So he put his hand on my chest and uh, 
he felt it and he didn't say anything right away but he said now when we talk about it that it was ridiculously fast and he's never seen or heard of anything like that. I needed to be rushed to the hospital. I was diagnosed with dilated cardiomyopathy which is a virus that attacked my heart. Two or three weeks of being in the hospital I received a heart transplant and after that it was just kind of I never looked back. Some challenges that people have now started to see more is just the aspect of having to take medicine every day at an exact time. It's an anti-rejection medicine. Um, my cells in my body look at my heart as a foreign object, so if I didn't take this medicine, all the cells would attack it and would cause my heart to go back into failure. But this, the medicine I take uh, prevents this from happening and it's a 12 hour cycle. Uh, and right now it's 8.45 in the morning, 8.45 at night. Um, and that could be a, a downside too. Sometimes I'll be out with my friends and maybe I'll forget it or something and they gotta drive me home to go pick it up because I can't miss it. Um, and then also just the, I get these biopsies uh, about three times, three to four times a year and they go in through my neck or through my groin and they cut off about eight pieces in my heart just to do tests so I'm out the next day it's nothing too serious but um, it definitely I'm, I'm out of sports for about a week so I usually try and plan them around the basketball season or whatever else is going on I don't want people to be looking at me and remember me as the kid with the heart transplant I just want to be a regular kid while Manny did not arrive in Nanuet until his freshman year it seems only natural that the two would meet become friends, and be a source of inspiration to each other. When Manny came to Nanuet in ninth grade, we were in the same science class. Yeah. And then we were like, well, we could both play basketball. And then I was like, I bet I could beat you one on one. And then we argued about it every single day, and we even asked our science teacher who we thought would win. By the way, he said me. Yeah, all right, so he said him. Sophomore year, we thought it was gonna be our time, and I got sick. I was out of school for about two months. But this year when it was like our time to shine, it was just like the chemistry we had, like we always knew where we were going to be, made no look passes to each other, and we just fed off each other so well because of that chemistry. I think that's also definitely where our friendship came apart too, because like pretty much every day we'd have practice and then we'd have tournaments like the whole weekend. We were just kind of hanging out the whole time, just us. and. And that's definitely where our friendship really started to show. Manny faced another hardship on December 16, 2016, when his mother passed away after a three-year battle with lung cancer. We, we had a game that day and like nobody expected it and he shows up ready for the bus, ready to play. He started that game, had one of the best games of the season. And I, I don't know how any kid is able to deal with losing his mom and then go and play a basketball game. And it's not like he just showed up and sat on the bench crying, feeling sorry for himself. He showed up, played his heart out, and had a great game. And to see that somebody was able to do that is really inspiring. Not surprisingly, Jack is also a source of inspiration for Manny. We were at the gym lifting weights and I remember the exact thing we were doing, whatever. And he told me to take off my headphone. He's like, you know, a lot of people don't see what you go through and everyone says I have it hard because of my hearing and because of my mom, but nobody's ever really seen what you've gone through. And as me being one of the kids that have, it's really inspiring to see what you go through. And like, no one has ever said that to me before. No it's one. good to know that you inspire people. Yeah, you know, exactly. I like to stay humble, but it's like good to know that there's people that appreciate it. Yeah. And then um, like, there's also people who have to deal with things that are a lot worse, so I don't take it for granted. Manny Machado and Jack Gilroy inspired each other, and their positive attitude and determination provide inspiration to us. They will continue to inspire in all of their future endeavors, well beyond the halls and basketball court of Nanuet High School.